When I decided to leave, I was so worried because I didn't know whether my name was put on the blacklist. When the plane was flying to the night sky, I looked down to the city and that was probably the very last eyesight that I could catch on the beautiful cityscape of Hong Kong. I come to an emotional rush. It was just so real for me that I'm unable to visit my family, my friends, and all the protest sites that mean so much to Hong Kong people, including myself. July 1st, 2020 may be the day Hong Kong's autonomous bubble finally burst. The critics say this is the end of one country. Holding a new national security law. Alex Chow had this sentence. I'm Nathan Law, a Hong Kong democratic activist now exiled in London. I first learned about Nathan during the 2014 Umbrella Movement when Nathan was just a student leader at the forefront with Joshua Wong. What Hong Kongers were asking for was just simply, you know, one vote, one person, the ability to pick their own leader. To understand what the Umbrella Movement was about, we have to understand Hong Kong's historical context. It was a British colony since the middle of the 19th century until 1997, when the British and Chinese governments agreed to the transfer of Hong Kong's sovereignty under something called One Country, Two Systems that was supposed to guarantee a move toward democracy. So Hong Kong is just constantly in this state of flux, in this state of uncertainty, where no one really knows what's going to happen and what's going to happen to the people of Hong Kong. Hong Kong people got so politicized and worry about their future because when we look back to the past uh, three decades, it was so clear the way that the Chinese Communist Party could sacrifice its people in order to retain in power. I was elected as the youngest uh, parliamentarian in Hong Kong at the age of 23 in 2016. He helped start something, and, and, and that something was, uh, was the awakening of, of an entire generation of Hong Kongers to fight for our freedom. We are a generation of protest. But in 2017, I was unseated in just nine months after I resumed office and also jailed because of my participation in the Umbrella Movement. Going to prison can change a person a lot. His identity these days is much less about, you know, demonstrating on the street. But, but much more about contextualizing Hong Kong and having that international perspective. Beijing uh, has long been trying to find ways to suppress Hong Kong's civil society. They decided that in order to completely eradicate Hong Kong's you know, pro-democracy movement, they would need to do something drastic. The national security law was passed on June 30th, 2020, and no one had seen the text of the bill before it was passed, including the government of Hong Kong. But the national security law effectively criminalized dissent. And it was so vague and so sweeping that overnight people just became really scared of, of crossing the line because no one knew where the line was anymore. And under the language of the bill, really anything could be a crime. Every one of us democratic campaigners would face legal persecution or even lifelong imprisonment. So I decided to flee to speak up for Hong Kong on the international level. We know for a fact that China has worked very hard to woo other countries, especially developing countries, trying to basically buy allies. There's a good number of countries in the world uh, that are more than happy to toe the Chinese government's line in terms of what's going on in Hong Kong, or what's happening even to the Uyghurs or the Taiwanese and the Tibetans, etc. Hong Kong's story is reflective of something broader, I think, what's going on in the world today. And it is a battle between democracy and authoritarianism. That's why I've been campaigning for alliance with all the democratic countries, that they should stand up together and to place human rights as their front and center policy and to work over it with a global agenda. Now that he's living full time in London, you know, he's meeting with members of the, the parliament and I expect that he will continue to do much more in the days to come. In just a year, I mean, in the UK, they stopped adopting Huawei as a 5G infrastructure. They declare that the Chinese government breached the British Joint Declaration for multiple times. They're offering the BNO scheme 
for people facing political suppression in Hong Kong. They're uplifting the extradition treaty with Hong Kong. They're extending the arms embargo. They are putting higher scrutiny on Chinese state enterprise. They're decreasing reliance on China's economy. And I think these are the changes that we need. He's definitely the most prominent voice in the Hong Kong democracy movement who's not in jail. So it's kind of on his shoulders. Um, and I think him and the few other activists who were able to leave Hong Kong, their focus is on international advocacy now. I have no way to back off. I just have to continue to tell the stories and to speak up for the demands of Hong Kong. Guang for Hong Kong! Guang for Hong Kong!